Finding discontinuities of rational functions. In this lesson we'll take a look at the domain of rational functions. Most algebraic functions such as these six functions have domains or allowable values of x that span from negative infinity all the way to positive infinity. But there are some functions that do have limited domains and some of the most commonly encountered are logarithmic functions, square root functions, and rational functions. For this lesson we're going to focus our attention on this type of function, a rational function. In this graphed function there is a break or discontinuity at x equals 2 shown by the vertical line in red. Some of the discontinuities will look like this one which is called an infinite discontinuity and is what is called a vertical asymptote like this line at x equals 2. And some rational functions like the one graphed here have what are called holes or removable discontinuities or point discontinuities. These types of discontinuities are harder to find because they can look like a line or some other more common type of function, but we'll examine how to find them later in the lesson. This is a hole or point discontinuity at x equals 6. Here are the functions we'll be analyzing in this lesson to describe their respective domains. Most rational functions, and by rational functions I mean any function that has a variable in the denominator of a fraction, have a value or values that make these denominators zero. And those values are not part of the domain of the function. Why is that? Because division by zero is undefined in math and in algebra, so the function does not exist at that particular x value. Let's look at this function, f of x equals 1 over x minus 2. It's where this denominator, x minus 2 equals 0, that the function is not defined or doesn't exist. We find out what that excluded value is by setting up the equation x minus 2 equals 0. We solve for x by adding 2 to both sides of the equation. Negative 2 plus 2 cancel. So our solution is x equals 2, and that is not a solution for what x is, but rather a value that x cannot be in the function. So we have to sort of change our way of thinking from looking for a solution to looking for what cannot be a value or a solution. So for the question, what is the domain of this function, the answer would be all real numbers except for x equals 2 or this can be written in interval notation as shown on the right side of the big U meaning and there's greater than negative infinity up to and not including to and also greater than to up to less than positive infinity. To graph this function we place it here in the function editor mode make sure that if there is more than one term in either the numerator or denominator to wrap that numerator and or denominator inside parentheses. Note how x minus 2 in the denominator is inside parentheses. Next press graph or zoom 6. Here is a vertical discontinuity drawn in red. It looks like about x equals 2. To be sure we can go to our table view by pressing second then graph and we see error at x equals 2 confirming the discontinuity calculated and viewed earlier. So the function is undefined or doesn't exist at x equals 2. Here's our next problem, this time in multiple choice standardized test format. Which values are excluded from the domain of the following function? We have y equals x minus 2 over x squared minus 2x minus 35. Again, our answer to this question depends on this denominator x squared minus 2x minus 35 being equal to 0. There are many ways to determine what numbers make this denominator 0. We'll first try factoring. I like to use the box method. The first term, x squared, goes in the upper left cell of our box. And the last term, minus 35, goes in the lower right cell. The factors of x squared are easy. x and x placed at the top of the box and at the left of the box. Next, we write down the factors of negative 35. That list of factors would include negative 5 times 7, negative 7 times 5, negative 1 times 35, and negative 35 times 1. 
And next to the list of factors, we place the list of the sums of those factors. The sum of negative 5 and 7 is 2. The sum of negative 7 and 5 is negative 2. The sum of negative 1 and 35 is 34. The sum of negative 35 and 1 is negative 34. We look for the sum that matches the coefficient of the middle term, which is negative 2x, and that is, of course, negative 2. And this is where we find that same number in our list of sums of factors. So that means that our factors will be x minus 7 and x plus 5. And to check, we fill in the cells. The upper right box is negative 7 times x or negative 7x, and the lower left box will be 5 times x or 5x. We combine the like terms. That gives us x squared minus 2x minus 35, which matches the denominator of our function. So we can rewrite our rational equation or function as y equals x minus 2 over quantity x minus 7 times quantity x plus 5. And this is where we see x equals negative 7 and x equals 5. Answer B. Danger, danger, danger. This is an error alert. We need to solve this denominator for 0. So that gives us x minus 7 equals 0, and also x plus 5 equals 0. And solving for x, that gives us x equals 7, and x equals negative 5. And here's where we find x equals negative 7 and x equals 5. We have to take it to the final step when solving by factoring. We can also place the function in our function editor in y equals view. Note that the numerator and denominator are wrapped inside parentheses. Press graph. We see vertical asymptotes or infinite discontinuities at x equals negative 5 and at x equals 7. We can also check out our table view by pressing second then graph. We see error at x equals 5, or negative 5 rather, and also error at x equals 7. And that confirms that our answer is C, which we circle as correct. Next problem, what is the domain of the following function? We have y equals x over 9x squared minus 3x. Again, in order to solve this problem, we need to find the value or values of x that make the denominator equal to 0. So we set it up as 9x squared minus 3x equals 0. On the left side, we can factor out 3x from both terms to give us 3x times quantity 3x minus 1 equals 0. So we can now split up the factors into two separate equations, 3x equals 0 and 3x minus 1 equals 0. For 3x minus 0, we divide both sides of the equation by negative 3, so we're left x equals 0. And on the right side, we add 1 to both sides of the equation, so 3x equals 1. And then to solve for x, we divide by 3, so x equals 1 third. And here's where we see both 0 and 1 third excluded in interval notation, so it looks like c would be our correct answer. In the calculator, here's the function entered into the function editor. And if we graph in a standard window, this is what it looks like. We cannot tell much except that there appears to be a vertical asymptote around x equals 0. If we adjust our window, we can get a closer view, and I got this one using zoom box. We can see that the function appears continuous for x equals 0 across the y-axis. And we see that we don't have a vertical discontinuity or asymptote at 0, but somewhere here between x equals 0 and x equals 1. But if we go to the table view, we see the discontinuity at x equals 0. And since it didn't show up on the graph, it's a whole or a removable discontinuity. If we reset the window, we can see a discontinuity both at 0 and at 1 third. So this confirms C is our correct answer. Another way this could have been looked at was to take these values from the answers of 0 and 1 third to see if either 0 or 1 third or both would give us 0 in the denominator. Next problem, for the function below, what are the values of x excluded from the domain? The function is f of x equals x times quantity x squared minus 9 over x squared minus 3x minus 18. 
Again, this problem is trying to find out what values of x make the denominator of the function 0, which would make the function undefined. But this time, instead of factoring, which can be done without a calculator, we'll try to solve by graphing. We solve by graphing by putting the denominator in our function editor as y equals x squared minus 3x minus 18. And when we graph it, this is what it looks like. We see solutions here at negative 3 and at 6. And here's where we see negative 3 and 6 in our answers. So that makes C our correct answer choice. We could have done other things here, like substitute numbers from the answer choices in the denominator and see which numbers give us 0. But here is the entire function entered in the function editor. Note how the entire denominator is enclosed within parentheses. When we graph with a standard window, this is what it looks like. It looks like we might have a discontinuity here someplace to the right. By changing the window view, we can see that infinite discontinuity on the right a little better. We see our vertical asymptote here at 6 or so. Why did I say 6? Because of a clue from the answers. In this graph, there is also a slant asymptote shown here by the slanted line. The function approaches but never touches this slanted line. Calculating and analyzing the slant asymptotes are beyond the scope of this lesson, but I'm taking the opportunity to bring it up for future benefit and understanding. Let's go to the table view by pressing second, then graph. We see our discontinuity here at 6, which we saw in the graph. But when we scroll up, we see this other discontinuity at negative 3, which we didn't see on the graph because it is a hole or point discontinuity that will not show up on the graph with a graphing calculator. Going back to the earlier graph we had, we have from our answer a discontinuity at negative 3, but it's not apparent on the graph. The reason it's not visible is because it's a hole or removable discontinuity. And the reason it's removable is because we can cancel out the part of the expression in the denominator that makes the function discontinuous. Here the function is expanded using factoring and it expands to f of x equals x times quantity x minus 3 times quantity x plus 3 divided by quantity x minus 6 times quantity x plus 3. And the quantity x plus 3 in the numerator cancels the quantity x plus 3 in the denominator. So if we place that equation in our function editor right under the original function, this is what it looks like x times quantity x minus 3 divided by quantity x minus 6. We go over to the left to change the function line to a fat line in case it graphs over the first function. This is just to the left of y2. Press graph or zoom 6. This time the heavier curve traced over the first one. We can see no difference and still don't see the discontinuity or hole removed at negative 3. But press second then graph to get to the table view. This time at x equals negative 3, we have our error for the original function. But now in y2, we do not have an error, but an output value of 2, indicating that the exclusion to the domain of negative 3 was removed by canceling. I do not make this observation a major point of this lesson, but thought it a good opportunity to give some explanation and analysis of what is happening with a point, discontinuity, or hole. Next problem. Where are the discontinuities in the function below? We're given the function y equals x cubed plus 4x over x to the fourth minus 1. For this one, we'll go back to the factoring to the denominator first. What does x to the fourth minus 1 factor to? Using the difference of squares, this factors out to quantity x squared minus 1 times quantity x squared plus 1 and quantity x squared minus 1 can be factored using the difference of squares a second time so the denominator becomes quantity x minus 1 times quantity x plus 1 times quantity x squared plus 1. Now we can set all three factors equal to 0 so we have x minus 1 equals 0, x plus 1 equals 0 and x squared plus 1 equals 0. For the first two equations solving for x we have x equals 1 for the second equation, we have x equals negative 1. And for the last equation, it's different. We have x squared equals negative 1. Can we solve for x 
by taking the square root of both sides? No, we cannot. The square root of negative 1 is not a real number. So that leaves x equals 1 and x equals negative 1 as our function discontinuities. And this is where we find x equals negative 1 and x equals 1. So we can circle our correct answer, b. We can also graph like we did for the others. Here, the function is entered in the function editor. Note that both the numerator and the denominator are wrapped inside parentheses. Press graph or zoom 6. We see two apparent vertical asymptotes on either side of the y-axis. To check, we look at the table view by pressing second, then graph, and we see the errors at x equals negative 1 and at x equals 1, just like we found by factoring, also confirming b as our correct answer. We'll take a look at one last problem. What are exclusions from the domain of the function shown below? We're given the function f of x equals x squared over x squared plus 4. Again, the exclusions to the domain are found in the values of x that make this denominator x squared plus 4 equal to 0. We can set up the equation x squared plus 4 equals 0. But let's graph this one. Here's the function entered into the function editor. Note that the denominator x squared plus 4 is wrapped inside parentheses. Press graph or zoom 6. We don't see the graph too well around the origin, so changing the window settings, here's a closer look at it. This still looks pretty much continuous, but we cannot see really closely to the y-axis. So we go to the table view by pressing 2nd, then graph. We see here that 0 is not an excluded value, and neither are any of the other x values given in the answer choices, negative 4, negative 2, or 2. And since none of the values are excluded and the graph looks continuous, our correct answer has to be d, which we circle as correct. I put in this problem to show that while we usually think of rational functions as having discontinuities, this is an example where there is no real number or value for x that makes the denominator zero or makes the function discontinuous at any point. This has been Finding Discontinuities of Rational Functions. Thanks for viewing.